Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, doing a kind of sort of review of Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, as you know, if you're familiar with my channel at all, I love this game. Absolutely adore it. So I'm gonna talk about, you know, what how what's good about this game, and a couple of the things that actually aren't so good about this game, while doing a kind of sort of speed run of this game. Uh, I'm not a good speedrunner or anything, but, you know, I'm gonna play through the game as I'm talking about it and give you a bit of an idea of my thoughts. So I will be skipping movies because I'm doing a sort of speed run, even if it's not a real speed run. <laughs> so, Super Mario Odyssey is a 3D collectathon style platformer in the vein of Mario 64, Banjo Kazooie, uh, Ukulele, uh, Spyro the Dragon, lots of other games like that, and it's one of my favourite games of all time. Uh, it's for the Nintendo Switch exclusively, and it's a Mario game, and it's an open world sort of Mario game in which you have to collect lots and lots of stuff. And you can roll around at the speed of sound, because you have places to go, and you are following your rainbow. <laughs> so yeah, this is obviously not a speed run. that's a real speed run, because I'm going so very slowly at this point. Okay, so yeah, now we have Cappy. Uh, so yeah, the, this this is the main draw of the game compared to every other Mario platformer. The fact that you have this lovely hat friend who can contribute to almost every aspect of the game uh, by being incredible in every way. So, Cappy. Uh, you can capture things, obviously, which gives you a bunch of different gameplay styles throughout the game. Uh, lets you experiment with different powers and stuff uh, without you know, making them too accessible, I guess. You can't use them in the wrong area, uh, which can be a problem in some games. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you've got capturing, uh, which I'm doing now to get this frog, but you've also got the fact that you can throw Cappy and bounce off Cappy in order to platform better, and that's enormous. The fact, like, between the cap bounce and just being able to do cap throws and spins and stuff to maintain air momentum, there is a lot that you can do with this hat friend on your head. Plus there's, you know, attacking enemies and stuff as well, which works out really well. Uh, controlling Cappy is wonderful. Uh, there's motion control. Uh, it's not technically required at all, but you pretty much do want to use it for certain things, like, a spinning cap throw like this, for example. Uh, but you can also just press the Y button to throw Cappy, which is what you normally do. Like that. Uh, then you've got Mario's move- Mario's movement, which is fairly similar to 64. Uh, I think all the moves are here, except punching. You can't punch. You have to throw Cappy instead. Uh, but otherwise I believe you have your full moveset from Mario 64 back in this game, which is pretty cool. Uh, plus some extra moves, like the, the cap return jump I just did. Uh, you've also got the air dive. You could do a dive move in Mario 64, but it didn't give you much momentum. Like, it didn't push you forward the way it does in this game, so you can't really use it as usefully as you can in this game. Uh, the... So yeah, um, basically it's a Mario game where your movement is really, really good. <laughs> That's pretty much the summation of why this game is amazing. <laughs> Uh, but there's, there's so much more though. Uh, you can see the boss here. Uh, the bosses are really great because they're all built in a way that rewards skill. Uh, because it's possible to beat pretty much every boss faster the better you are at the game. Which really facilitates stuff like speedruns. Uh, and is excellent. Uh, also the soundtrack is amazing. I happen to know that it plays a really nice sound at this bit, just as you're going through here. I have the sound off, for echoing reasons. Uh, so yeah, um, an another amazing thing about this game is that, that you kind of don't quite notice if you're sort of rushing through is how much world building there really is. Uh, since this isn't going to be a very speedrunny speedrun, it's just me sort of playing through the game, so I will have a quick look. Uh, we can't just get this cutscene, so I will. And this one. Okay, so... We are in the Cascade Kingdom. There we go. So yeah, um, the world building, what, I'm, what I mean is, basically every every one of these kingdoms has a unique, like, uh, backstory and culture to it, I suppose? 
Uh, if you look at the little maps that you get for each kingdom, you can actually zoom in on the sides here, and there's a whole bunch of information about the kingdom, and it's really, like, interestingly written and stuff, and it gives you information about the kingdom and gives you a really good idea of where you are and gives the place more depth, I think, which is really nice. Uh, the purple coins help with that, too. Uh, also, the checkpoint system is great. I'm kind of just going all over the place here, as you can probably hear. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, okay, and capturing this chomp here. I, I think the game is really, really good at tutorializing compared to some games. Uh, the little pop-ups to tell you what the controls are for various moves are all very, like, timely and helpful. Uh, and the little st and the sound effects are great too. Oh my god! Uh, the little psh th the little click click sound that comes up after you get a moon is really nice. Okay, uh, let's get the movie. Thank you. We sure have found a power moon. Okay, there we go. Uh, so yeah, you've got Mario controlling beautifully. You've got the sound is beautiful. The visuals are beautiful. Each of the game worlds are really like there's a whole bunch of kingdoms to visit here. And all of them are really fleshed out and detailed in a way uh, that you can't really say the same about, say, levels in Mario 64. It had about the same number, but they weren't as character-driven as this one in terms of... I don't know what I'm trying to say. I think I think you can probably figure it out, but I'm not, I'm not good at expressing myself while playing a video game fast and, you know, trying to play it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this isn't the most efficient way to do this kingdom, but whatever. Uh, might do a dino skip just for the, the fun of it. So yeah, uh, and Kathy, besides being you know such an, in an integrally integrally powerful game mechanic, is a wonderful character as well. She has a lot of dialogue and a lot to contribute to the game. Uh, I think a lot more so than characters like Flood, and, um... I, I mean, there was there was a little Luma friend in Galaxy, but they didn't actually say anything. But, like, compared to Flood, Cappy has a lot more personality, and it's it's really, really cute and good. And this isn't working. What's going on? Why isn't this trampoline trampolining me like it's supposed to? There we go. No, I'm facing the wrong way, so it didn't have to work. What's going on with this trampoline? <laughs> oh yeah, no fall damage, that's good. But yeah, Cappy has a lot of little little dialogue pieces throughout the game, and a lot of little conversations with Mario, and has a lot of personality compared to characters like Flood that I think basically just gave you a couple of game hints, and that's about it. Granted, Sunshine was also a great game, but uh, I'm having so much more trouble with this. Did it change? See, it's not actually giving me the spring like it's supposed to. Maybe it was patched to 1.3. That would be really weird, though. There we go. Hmm. Something strange is going on. Okay, uh, let's try it one more time, then let's do the level normally. See, that should be springing me off the di the, um, the trampoline. Because my dino foot is touching it. You can see that. Hmm. Possible they actually did patch it in 1.3 so you couldn't do Dino Skip anymore, and I just didn't hear about that. That would be sad though. Okay, so yeah, let's do it normal way. Uh, you can just get up here without too much trouble. Uh, between Cappy and Mario's own moves, you have a lot of agility to do really interesting things in this game and travel around the world in unexpected ways, which is really, really cool. Uh, let's catch this jump. Oh, this is great too. This, um,. These little 2D sections, there's, there's one in pretty much every kingdom, I think. And they just basically give you a little, little taste of nostalgia without it affecting the gameplay too much. And I think it's really good that it's just here as a really cute way to give you some of that classic 2D Mario experience. Uh, again, without intruding too much. Uh, because the game overall is very open and free. And it just gives you a lot of options and it's good. There we go. <laughs> Maybe they patched Dinoskip 1.3, that would be weird. 
Okay, uh... So yeah, we're making our way through Cascade. Going, making our way downtown. Yeah, we need to repair our airship, thank you. Oh, the Odyssey is wonderful too. Uh, I've talked about this before, but the Odyssey, I believe, has a lot of character as, you know, a vehicle. Uh, you can compare it to things like uh, the, Com the Comet Observatory in Galaxy 1, or Starship Mario in Galaxy 2, or... Um, I think those are the ones that have vehicles. But yeah, those ones. Uh, whereas, I think the Odyssey, it has a lot more personality uh, compared to both of those. The Comet Observatory had some too, but it was more of a hub world in itself rather than a vehicle. Bam. Starship Mario was definitely a vehicle, but it felt kind of static, I guess. Like, characters showed up on top of it, but it was just Mario's face, basically. And it just moved around, you know, a, a, a um, 2D Mario-style world map, like you'd have in, um, in a Super Mario Bros. game. Whereas the Odyssey, it gets affected during the game. It gets broken several times, and you've got to fix it, and the paint gets scratched, and you put stickers on it, and it's just, it feels like it has a lot more personality to it. And I really like that, and I consider it an important character in the game. <laughs> Which probably works in the title. Also, we got a Grand Moon. My timing is way off. <laughs> it might have been more accurate, actually. I know that the commentary track doesn't time perfectly. Uh, what else to talk about? Uh, the fact, the way that I'm... Um, once we get into Tostarina, we can really talk properly, because... That's when the game really opens up and gets into its normal state, basically. Can't skip this. Catching. Good old five moons, all we need. I believe a regular speedrunner would do this much faster, but I'm no speedrunner. And I keep, you know, pausing to talk about things, so. <laughs> And the Odyssey is restored. Sure is. The little track that plays when the Odyssey gets repaired or restored or powered up is really cute. I like it. And then there's the world map here. Uh, this is, I think, a really good way of handling things. It, it is very linear, which is an interesting choice considering that this game in itself is very non-linear uh, in terms of you know which moons you get and which order you get them in. Uh, but, like, even at this early point, you, you're supposed to go forward to the Sand Kingdom, but you can go back to the Cap Kingdom right now, uh, if you wanted to. And you can go get moons there if you want, and there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Like, this game has a big focus on the freedom that you're given by the Odyssey and by, you know, the game's design in general. Uh, so that's Fossil Falls. Uh, Tostarina is really, really where the game becomes Odyssey, I think. Fossil Falls, despite having excellent music, is just an introduction to the gameplay, basically. Whereas... Hang on, I can skip this. <laughs> uh, whereas, yeah, Tostarina is an actual, like, true kingdom style that plays like a regular kingdom, I guess. Without locking you off from stuff all the time. Uh, a little, little bit of a tutorial from Gappy here. And you get the action guide. Uh, Sand Kingdom. I'm going, I'm going through this basically as fast as I can because I'm sort of quote unquote speed running the game, but not really. <laughs> if I were actually speed running, I'd be rolling a lot more. That's what the fastest way to move around, and I'm not doing it. <laughs> Huzzah! Alright, so now here we are in Tost Arena. This is the pl first place you really get a taste of how open this game is. Uh, and also a lot of its personality, because Tost Arena has people in it. And you can see that the little, uh, Day of the Dead people. I forget how to pronounce that in Spanish. Del Dues Muertos? Something like that. Uh, I can't remember. I'm bad at Spanish. Uh, but, yeah. I've just got, you know, Tost Arenans. And then up here. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh, and yeah, this is the first first kingdom that's based entirely on a moon quota, rather than actually requiring you to get particular moons. You do not have to get any story moons here, as I've demonstrated in my previous run, because I thought they were impossible, even though they weren't. 
Uh, so yeah, this kingdom really opens things up for you compared to the previous parts of the game. Uh, you've got a really, really big area to explore and you can warp around to visit different parts of it. You can look ahead uh, and see things that you're not really supposed to be able to look at yet. Uh, for example, you can go find the, the boss of this level uh, who's hanging out, I think, here-ish somewhere. You can go talk to that guy. Well, you can't talk to him, but you can, you can, you know, walk up to him and say, Oh, hey, so there's a multi-moon in your head, but we can't reach it. And stuff like that. <laughs> uh, over here we've got a moon. Uh, there is a strat you can do this faster, but yeah, this isn't really a speed run. I'm just talking about stuff. So, yeah, this is really where you get an idea of the way this game's gonna be working. Where you're just exploring big, uh, fun platforming environments with not much direction beyond the fact that you need to get power moons to power the Odyssey to go to the next part. And that's about all you have to it. <laughs> ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah. So yeah, here you can do all sorts of different things. There's a couple of skips you can do. I might try to do the, um, Jaxi skip. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Should go break that first though. Here's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can just fly a bullet over there to get that moon as well, which is a good demonstration of the different options this game gives you. Uh, you don't have to figure out that you can use a long jump and a cap bounce to get over there. You can just use the bullet instead. Uh, and of course, by the same token, you can use a bullet to do some other things as well, such as fly all the way over here. I think I've done this wrong. Nope, I did it right. <laughs> to fly over here. Um, I don't know if that's intentional, but that lets you get this moon really easily, so that's a good trick. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! <laughs> uh, and you can also buy a Jaxi here, and then you have access to Jaxis everywhere, so that's cool. Uh, I might come back to that later. So, yeah, um, basically the theme of Odyssey is freedom and different paths of going through the game, which is great, because I like sandbox games, and I like open world games, and I like this game. <laughs> uh, there's just all sorts of different challenges you want to, you have to do, and because everything is based on these quotas, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba, yeah, which you can see in the top corner there, all the time as you're playing, it's really easy to keep track of how much you've done, how much stuff you still need to do, and it's really straightforward to do all the stuff you want to do without doing anything you don't want to do. I keep messing that up. <laughs> there we go. Uh, there's also, you know, so much you can unlock by learning advanced movement strats and stuff, like a Cappy Roll Jump here, uh, which is great for doing trick jumps and stuff. That's excellent. Uh, bam. Uh, the sound design is beautiful. The visuals are beautiful. Uh, Mario's controls are really, really tight. Everything feels very precise all the time, and you can get so much interesting movement stuff done. Between ground pound jumps, which are great, and cap throws, cap bounces, uh, different cap bounces on the ground which do different things and are also useful for different purposes. Oh my goodness. And then there's capturing, which just expands things up even more. This game is just, it's very, very deep, <laughs> I would say. Uh, which is a good thing. Um, let me see. I might go talk to the Sphinx. Ding, ding, ding. This is great too. Uh, I know that a lot of Mario games have something like this, but it's fun to do, do this stuff, to answer questions every now and then, and it never asks for too many, which is good. Um, I think that's better than, say, in Ukulele, where the quizzes require, like, 10 questions in a row, and you get only a couple of chances, and if you mess any up, you die. I mean, I think it's better here. Uh, speaking of which, actually, ukulele doesn't do this either, but lives. Lives are not a thing in this game, and lives are not a thing in that game, and that is a really huge improvement on a bunch of games I could mention. <laughs> uh, it's really good that Nintendo have figured out that having lives in a 3D platformer that saves everything you do doesn't, doesn't make sense. At all. Bam. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. You can see this is the boss that you would be fighting at the end of the kingdom. You can find them here as soon as you arrive. And Cappy can comment on the fact that there's a multi moon in the head there. And you can also throw Cappy 
at this little point here to get some coins out. So there's a reward for doing this as well, which is cool. Uh, there's a lot of places in this game that give you, like, hidden coins and stuff. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff, I think this was introduced in, like, some previous games. I think this 3D World, Mario 3D World, I didn't play that one, but I think it did a lot of similar stuff with, like, invisible coins and coin piles, like the ones we saw in the Sphinx back there. Here it works a lot better, in my opinion, because this game is so focused on exploration compared to like linear get to the end of the level that the fact that there's a whole bunch of stuff hidden that's invisible you can find by getting to tricky places just like contributes to that really well. Uh, another demonstration of the flexibility and freedom this game gives you is in here. <laughs> so yeah here this is this area is called the bullet bill maze. What you're supposed to do is capture one of these bullet bills and fly over that poison in order to get through. Uh, instead you can just mess up the jump. Uh, instead you can just uh, climb up here and just walk on the walls up here instead of actually going through the maze. And this is apparently completely intentional and not even hard to do, honestly. Uh, you hop down here, get a moon. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! I think we can get enough height to get back out again. There we go. And then from there, you can go get the other moon, which is at the end. So yeah, you are supposed to capture a bullet bill and fly through all these obstacles, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And that is the hallmark of this game. Yeah! Just giving you different paths to do things with, and different things to do. Like, because of the way the quota system works, there's very much... Like, there's very little, um restriction on which moons you actually go after in any part of the game. Although, of course, if you're doing, you know, 100% run and getting every moon, you will eventually get every moon, but you can do them in any order you want, which is nice. Uh, some more moons down here. Uh, these, are, these, these areas are great too, and emblematic of the game's freedom idea. Basically, they're invisible platforms. Uh, you can't see them because they're invisible, but you can still stand on them even though they're invisible. So, you can use that uh, Moai there in order to see the platforms by borrowing their sunglasses, by capturing them. But you don't have to. You can walk on these invisible platforms as Mario and just make your way through without actually having to capture them at all. Uh, and there are, there are often some hints of, as to where the platforms are, like these uh, purple coins here. So you don't have to actually worry that much about the fact that there are even invisible platforms to worry about because of the clues it gives you, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can see, I haven't stepped anywhere that wasn't obviously safe for basically that whole run. Uh, even though I didn't use any invisibility seeing because of the way the hints are positioned, you can just figure it out, which is great. I don't know if I can do anything over there because I haven't done the first story moon. I want to go have a look just in case. So yeah, with Cappy roll jumps and stuff like that, the movement opportunities this game gives you are extremely flexible. Uh, this is where the second story moon in this kingdom would be. I didn't do the first one, so yeah, there's not much I can actually do over here yet. Just wanted to check. <laughs> uh, warping is great too. Um, although moving around in this game is a lot of fun, and like navigating is is normally a lot of fun. There are some things that would be more annoying if you didn't have the ability to warp to any truck point flag, but because you do, it's not annoying, which is great. Uh, it's really well designed. Uh, the towns are all great, like there's a lot of personality and character in these places, which I think is lovely. Uh, there's lots of hidden stuff as well. Down here is a hidden area we can just roll our way into. There we go. To sneak into the back of this shop. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! If you come to the front of the shop, you can see that same moon, which gives you a bit of a hint. Uh, the game gives you lots of good hints for stuff, which is good. Oh, I love Talker 2. I should show off Talker 2. Uh, basically, Talker 2, who is up here, will tell you the name of a moon at random on the lone pillar. So, that means there's a moon somewhere on a lone pillar. <laughs> And because the moons are all named in a way that sort of describes where they are, it gives you a bit of a hint as to where, where to find them. 
you can actually buy from the hint toad uh, a pointer to where ex exactly where Ramoon is, which shows up on the map. But it's more fun, I think, to use Talker to and use the moon names to get a hint. Because of the way they've been carefully named to, keep, to be hints as to where they are, you can use that instead and get a pretty good idea of where stuff is hiding. Uh, pretty good trick. Okay, so on the lone pillar is up there. You can see it up on that pillar there. The lone one. Uh, basically what you want to do is just get this bullet bill from up here. Uh, this one is another example of having alternate options. Rather than doing this with the bullet bill, you could also do enough of the story to gain access to the top of that pyramid, and then you could jump down to get this one. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Which works just as well. So again, it's up to you and the way you want to do things, which is pretty much this game's concept, and it's lovely. Uh, one thing that is a bit of a problem, I think, is that motion controls are sometimes forced. Right now, I am rolling by shaking the right Joy-Con. Uh, I could roll by pressing the Y button, but this way of rolling is significantly faster for some reason. Uh, I don't know why Nintendo didn't just make them the same speed, so that you could use either, but that's what they did. Climbing is another problem. Uh, here you have to use motion controls to climb quickly. You can see Mario goes up like this, but if I shake the Joy-Con, much, much faster. So, again, it's a problem, uh, and I'm not a huge fan of that design decision. Uh, there's a couple of different places where you absolutely need the motion controls to be fast enough to do something. Mostly it's with bullet bills. Uh, some places you need to fly the bullets to adjust within reach if you're shaking the Joy-Con constantly. Uh, there's also a couple of skips that require to use motion control, but obviously that's not intentional, so I can forgive Nintendo for that part. <laughs> Okay, we have all the wounds we need here, let's move on. Uh, again, you can see there's a lot of detail on the map here to give you an idea of what Tostarina is like. Expansive, Tostarina's Moai is pyramid-shaped, temperature. Uh, it's interesting that it's in Fahrenheit because I'm living in Australia and this would be the Australian version of the game. Strange. Uh, so yeah, you can see lots of different details all over this piece of, piece of, um, this. <laughs> All over, all over this section of the map to tell you about the kingdom. Each kingdom has a lot of, like, um, world building that's gone into it, which I think is an important part of the way this game works. Um, you're not just visiting levels, you're visiting locations. And that really fits into the... Uh, the, the whole, the whole, um aesthetic of travelling around the world. The fact that when you go somewhere, it is a place that you've gone to and it has a meaning. Uh, the Lake Kingdom's a good demonstration of that too. This is Lake Lamode we're heading to now. Uh, I don't know if this is really a review or just me talking about how I like the game, but you know, whatever. It's kind of the same thing, I guess. Uh, uh, Cappy, again, is wonderful as both a part of the game and as a character. You can see how very cute she is uh, when she's sitting there reading the map. Which, for some reason, tells you about doing cap throws. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, she's adorable. Okay, here we are in, like, Lake Lamode. So yeah, um, as you may know, Lamode, it means the fashion in French. It doesn't mean ice cream. Uh, and basically what you're doing here is you've got a lake that's populated by these little fashion designers. who are all very sad because the Brutals are here and have ruined everything. Uh, this is another demonstration. This, uh area of the game demonstrates another part of about bleh, some more freedom that the game gives you basically the intended route to get over there where the brutals are is to go over this way uh, I'll just demonstrate both ways just to give you an idea when you go this way uh, you have to unzip this zipper uh, like so and then you have to swim through this tunnel here uh, but if you don't want to swim through the tunnel for example, if you don't want to unzip the zipper because it requires you to move the left analog stick, or if you, you know, don't want to swim because you don't allow to touch water, or, you know, just any reason you don't want to go that way, you can also just do a triple jump here and make it up this way. Quite easily, actually. Uh, and the game is clearly designed to let you take alternate routes through levels like that. Uh, which is great. <laughs> 
Um, so, here in Lake Lamour, you don't actually need very many moons here. You can see you just need eight. And it's quite easy to get the eight you need without doing anything too significant. Uh, there's only one story moon here for fighting the Brutals, which is an interesting choice. Most kingdoms te have like a few story moons and a bit of an ongoing narrative. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. But this one, just the one. Uh, yeah, this is not by any means a real speed run. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Oh yeah, yeah, this is not as good a place to... I wonder how high up that is. It looks a bit too high. Uh, again, you can capture a fish. Uh, another example of the choice the game gives you. You can capture a fish to go underwater and not need to breathe, but you can also just go underwater as Mario and ignore the fish, and you'll be fine. As far as, I don't think there's anywhere in the game that requires so much air that you cannot do it without a fish. Uh, you might take some damage, for example if you go down here, uh, you're expected to bring a fish with you, but if you just keep ground pounding, uh, you'll take a hit, maybe two, but you will be able to get down there without actually dying. See, if you take a fish here, obviously it's much easier, but if you do it as Mario, it's possible to do, and you'll, you'll make your way down here, and you won't die. Uh, of course, I have six health because I haven't really taken hits very much uh, since getting that first life up part back in the Cap Kingdom. Uh, but yeah, swim, 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 swim. Uh, here's Captain Toad. This is a fun detail too. It's nice to see Captain Toad throughout the game. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. And he's always got moons, which is nice, and he's usually in a hard to reach spot, so the challenge is, you know, getting to him rather than talking to him, which is nice. Uh, it's another one of these coin piles up here. Again, this game has a lot of, like, loot positions a little bit out of the way to encourage you to explore and get to different places, which is great, because exploring getting to different places is super fun. Uh, there's also this detail, which is kind of interesting. You can see there's a pixel cat peach over there. And there's a couple of pixel critters like this, which will reward you if you throw your hat at them. With various stuff, uh, which is nice. So yeah, um... Yeah, this, this... So basically the game gives you a linear objective, but an open world to complete it in, sort of. Uh, because the levels that you get are almost completely linear. Uh, I did get to choose lake rather than wooded. Yet yeah, you do one then the other, but you get to pick what order you do them in. Uh, but you do have to do both of them, and you have to do both of them before you get to the next part of the game. So, like, the kingdoms are almost always in exactly this. Like, they're almost all... Well, I mean, almost all of them you can't change what position they're in, in the order. There's a couple of choices you get, but not much. And... It's not really a problem, uh, because you don't need to be in each kingdom for very long uh, on your first run through, it ends up being essentially uh, like Mario 64 sort of style, where you can just go wherever you want to go to get whatever moons you want to get uh, before long, honestly, because everything unlocks quite quickly in this game, relative to the, you know, amount of content there is. You need, I believe, 124 moons to complete the game minimum? Something like that. It's it's like a it sounds like a big number, but because moons are so plentiful, it's not a big number. <laughs> so you can do that. That's pretty cool. Uh... Ah! <laughs> it's gonna happen eventually. Um, so yeah, dying, you lose just 10 coins. I think that's a really good design choice. Like, you do get penalised for dying, but not in a way that's problematic. You just lose a tiny amount of money. And money is everywhere in this game, so it doesn't really affect you too badly. But you can see, I've already got back four of those 10 coins. Five, six, seven. Uh, here again, you're supposed to actually use the unzippable thing used to make platforms, but you don't need to. You can... Just jump between these ledges as regular Mario without adding the extra platforms. Uh, 
Uh, here's a little zipper up there. Um, but yeah, so... What am I, what am I trying to say? Basically that I love this game. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of, like, alternate ways of doing things throughout this game, and, and... That's, that's the whole basic premise of the game, that you've got a lot of freedom to choose what you do, even though it's designed to give you a linear experience. Like, if you go for the story moons in each kingdom, the ones it points out to you, uh, you will usually get enough moons without having to worry about too much else. So you could just do it that way, and you would get through the game linearly while doing, like, the stuff it points you towards without losing, like, having any trouble with what direction you should go. But, you don't have to do it that way. Uh, you have a lot more choice than that. Uh, and that's part of the game's magic, that there's so many different routes through that you can take for each level, and then once you've completed all the levels, uh, you've still got so much more to do because the game itself is so enormous. Like I said, one, 124 moons? It's 120-something. Maybe 128. Uh, but you need, you need like, a, a smallish number because there are actually 880 unique moons. There's always going to be a lot more to do than you have already done. Uh, and that's, that's great. <laughs> uh, of course, I have gotten all 880 moons several times because I love this game and I've replayed it repeatedly. <laughs> but... That's just because I love it so much that I keep playing it. So that's that. Ah, uh, there we go. So, yeah, um... I don't know if this is a review or just me playing Odyssey while saying that I love Odyssey. I'm trying to review it, but, you know, it's hard to be objective about things. Uh, if I had... Uh, one thing I would criticise, I think, is the way shops work, because it doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, I'll demonstrate it in a second, once I'm out of here. Uh, basically what happens is, I can probably just explain it actually, uh, each of the game's shops you can buy one moon from, uh, for, I think it's 50 coins? No, it's 100, sorry, 100 coins. So yeah, you can buy a moon from each shop, exactly one moon. Uh, but once you've completed the story, uh, and you can go back to all the shops and they will sell any number of moons you want, you can buy unlimited moons from any shop once you've completed the story. Uh, but the thing is, there's no point to that. Um, once you've completed the game, like, the only thing you need more moons for is accessing the two post-game areas, and you get one of those at 250 moons and one at 500 moons. And there's more than enough moons in the game to get you to 500 without having to do, like, really hard ones. Uh, like, you, you'd be able to reach that total even if you weren't super good at the game, just getting easier moons. So I don't think needing, like, the ability to buy unlimited moons to access those, uh, areas is necessary, and so I'm not really sure what it's useful for. Like, you can't use it to get through the rest of the game more easily, because you can only buy one moon until you finish the game. But once you have finished the game, you can buy unlimited, and at that point it doesn't matter as much. I don't know. It, it just doesn't make much sense the way, it, way the way they decided to do it. If you could buy moons at any time, like unlimited moons whenever you wanted from the beginning of the game, then you could use them as like a sort of an assist mode kind of thing where you say, hey, I'm not so good at this Mario game, please let me skip to the next kingdom, I'll buy the necessary moons. But you can't actually do that because you can only buy one moon. Um, so I don't know, I don't know, it just seems like they've made some strange choices with that part. Uh... I don't know, maybe I'm just, I'm just not thinking about it right. Got some moon back here. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Um, swimming controls are really good in my opinion. Uh, basically it's, it's kind of like a 2D Mario game. Mario like sinks all the time, but you can tap B to swim up. Uh, and you can tap, and unlike a 2D Mario game, you can also tap uh, ZL, Y, as though you're trying to do an air dive to do a little fast swim like that. Both very useful moves. Uh, I think there's another moon up there, so let's just... There we go. You're supposed to um, go up inside the plaza using this tunnel over here. 
but you can do it this way, and I have. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, yeah, I think the shops don't make much sense, and the motion controls being mandatory for certain moons is a little frustrating. Uh, I think that the game is best played with attached Joy-Cons anyway, so for a regular, like, able-bodied player, that's fine, but it's not great for, you know, disabled players using different kinds of controls. They're going to have trouble with the motion controls. Uh, I suppose if you had, like, a special controller that compensated for that by giving you a button for shake, that would work, but I don't know if that's a thing that people can actually get. Uh, if it is, that's great, and that would work fine, but still, it's a little... I think rude on Nintendo's part to give you moons that absolutely require you to use motion control rather than just making it so pressing Y makes the bullet go as fast as shaking does, for example. Uh, which would have been just as easy to do, but isn't what they did. Um, so yeah, so motion control is a bit of a problem. The way the shops work just it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't really bother me, it's just I don't really get the point, I guess. Uh, the level designs are wonderful. Uh, the way they've written all the different kingdoms and given them all personality and given them world building on the maps that you can look at and all the people to talk to, they've, they've, they're extremely rich and detailed levels. Even the smaller ones, like Lake Mode back there, is... A really interesting concept for a level with a lot of like charm and depth and character to it and I find it very appealing and good. Uh, and then there's much bigger kingdoms like this one here, uh, Steam Gardens, you can see this room requires 16 moons and you can sort of get the idea of how, how uh, larger kingdoms can just do a whole lot more. Uh, this one has a bit of a problem in my opinion actually, uh, I'll just demonstrate it. Uh, this area of Steam Gardens is a lot of fun and totally fine, I don't have a problem with this part, but uh, when you go down here, instead of dying you go to another area called the Deep Woods, and the Deep Woods is, in my opinion, not a great part of the game. Basically the Deep Woods shows up on the map in the corner here, uh, you don't have a real map so it's hard to navigate, and it's also sort of foggy like this, so you can't really see very far in front of you. Um, and there's a bunch of moons to get down here, so you do have to come down here to get everything. Uh, but you can't see where you are on the map, and you can't warp out while you're down here. The warps don't work for some reason. I don't know why. Like, normally warps don't work if you're in mid-air, which makes sense, so you can't, you know, warp out of dying. Uh, but warps should work down here, because you're touching the ground, it's, it's just normal. Um, but no, no, no matter how many times you come down there, how many beanstalks you plant, you never actually get to warp out of the deep woods, and I think that's really annoying. Um, and it should just have a map as well, like, the, the main area has a map, and it's really good and fun and easy to navigate, but that area doesn't, and it's annoying. So yeah, that's another problem. Uh, I can probably come up with a few more if I keep thinking. ba da ba da ba da ba Yeah! A couple moons here by getting that rock and using it to hit that bunny. Uh, I saw that trick on a speed run. So yeah, that was a bit a bit speed running of me, but I'm still not doing a very good speed run considering the world record for the entire game is under an hour and I'm only up to wooded. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's another example of the freedom the game gives you. You can talk to the Sphinx here and go through that way, uh, but if you don't want to talk to the Sphinx or you don't, you just you want to go somewhere different, you can also go over here where this little waterfall is, climb up here, and go around this way. And you can get to all the same places without having to talk to the Sphinx at all, if you don't want to. Uh, there's some also some other moons up here, so it is worth going this way. Uh, to make your way around here, you can see there's a fire bro here, which is always fun. Uh, and there's... Also, a nut up there, which is always fun. There we go. Yeah, you're supposed to bring, uh, I believe, an uproot over here to climb up here and break the nut, but you can also just do it as Mario like that. Uh, most things that require a capture don't require a capture in this game, which I think is one of its biggest charms. Uh, the minimum number of captures to beat the game is 
12 now, I think. Uh, considering how large and how much stuff this game, how large this game is and how much stuff there is in it, that's pretty impressive. Although you are, you know, picking your moons very carefully to avoid ones that require you to capture something. <laughs> uh, I believe you can do nearly everything without using any uproots. There's just one moon... Well, I mean, there's one boss that you can't fire without getting any enough root first, and that boss guards a couple of moons. Bam. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of different routes and stuff you can explore, different paths you can go through. Uh, over here, what you're supposed to do is go up that way where the piranha plants are, but there's some stuff you can do by going over this way instead. Uh, you can't get in there yet, but you can get around where that is by taking a shortcut. That we'll probably take just to demonstrate. Uh, around here, you're supposed to use an uproot here as well, but you don't have to. You can just triple jump. Bounce up here. Easy peasy. Uh, and then you can just use a bit of a wall jump to break the nut. Like this. Not the fastest way to break the nut, but whatever. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'm a big... So definitely, again, the main appeal of this game is, is, is to me the freedom it gives you to do things differently and to use different strategies to achieve what your aims. Uh, and, you know, different aims, you can pick which moons to do, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's, it's about freedom basically and how much the game gives you, which is a lot. Uh, you can see the back of the Sphinx was there, so we can't actually go back that way. So let's head forward for the moment. Uh, here you're supposed to take, take it up route again, so that you can uh, handle some of this poison and stuff. But Mario can climb this just fine, so don't bother with the up route unless you really want to. Uh, another example here, uh, you're meant to take an up route into this maze here. You stand here and push up with the up route to open that. But you can just, you know, do a long jump over here if you want. That works too. Ah, <laughs> uh, pretty cool. I can pull this off. Let's have it. Let's give it a try. Oop. Uh, I know that in some speedruns, people do this trick where you do a triple jump. Uh, I think the plant needs to be killed first, but I don't want to kill it. Uh, let's give it a kill. Oh yeah, uh, Cappy will be eaten by plants instead of um, instead of you know capturing them. So you gotta watch out for that. Basically, if you can do a triple jump just right, you can triple jump up there without getting the flower path that you normally need. Oh no, I fell down. And I'm dead. <laughs> boop boop boop. I don't know if I got the checkpoint or not. Okay, cool, I did. Uh... Yeah, I'll just kill the plant just normally. Here we go. Bop, bop. Um, so, yeah, I love the game's soundtrack, I love the level design, the mobility the game gives you to do things in different ways, whether you want to, you know, capture something to get through a certain way, or just do it with Mario's movement, or do it with Mario's movement a different way, uh, or, you know, sometimes there's a couple of different captures you can work with. There's a lot of different options the game gives you in different parts, and it's wonderful. Uh, uh, over here you can go get some moons and stuff if you want. What you do want. There's one here. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, and that wants you to use this P-switch to get back across, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna long jump like this. There we go, easy peasy. Uh, here you're supposed to use this P-switch to get a bridge down to that doorway, but you don't have to, you can just do a little triple jump. Do a little triple jump. Like this. To get into this section up here, and climb onto the tower that way, which is a pretty cool trick, if I do say so myself. <laughs> oh my gosh, this game. Uh, you have to carefully make your way up, and then you can get into the tower without having to actually go through the tower and just get to the top straight away. Uh, pretty neat. There are some moons inside the tower, so I believe speedrunners usually just go through, but you can not go through if you prefer. 
Uh, example, there's one moon at the top here. I don't know if you can reach that. Uh, let me see. That's really high up. Maybe, maybe. Let's, I think you might need an uproot to reach it. That's sad. Um, it might be possible. Uh, there is another moon here that I know you can get without an uproot. I'm just trying to remember where it is. It's on one side of the tower. There it is. Another one of these nuts has a moon inside, so you just break that. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. Easy peasy. Um, so, yeah, basically the, the, this game gives you really great movement, really nice level design, really, really tight platforming, and it just asks you to do things however you want to do things, and I think that's really great. This game is really amenable to challenge runs, as you know, I already did a crouching challenge run, uh, there have been jumpless runs of the game, uh, and minimum capture runs, which is 12, and coinless runs, there have been all sorts of challenge runs for this game. Um, it is a bit harder to do a challenge, a coinless run of this game than some of the Mario games, because, like a lot of the more recent Marios, this one gives you coins quite a lot. When you jump on enemies, you get a coin, things like that. Uh, whereas in some of the older Marios, you didn't have that, uh, problem. Uh, for instance, in, uh, Mario 3, you don't get coins if you jump on enemies. <laughs> Same thing with most Mario games, really. Mario World, same thing. Uh, New Super Mario Bros, same thing, actually. But, um, 3D Land, 3D World. This game, you jump on an enemy, you get their coin. Uh, 64, the coin came out, but you didn't have to collect it, so, yeah. They've made it a bit trickier to do a coinless run by making enemies unkillable. Well, most enemies are unkillable, some enemies you can kill. Um,. I'm not sure which way I want to go. Oh, poison here. Oh, yeah, another good thing about Cappy, you can just clean off your poison, the poison here by throwing Cappy around, which is great. Uh, so yeah, Cappy's a really versatile friend. Uh, you've got like a lot of flood-like stuff in terms of movement, but also in terms of the ability to interact with the environment. Uh, just like with flood, there's stuff that coins will come out of if you throw a hat at it. Same deal as when you sprayed stuff in Sunshine. Uh, there's lots of stuff that you can spin uh, Cappy around. For example, on the Odyssey here, there's this little flag. You can spin Cappy around that as much as you want. There you go. You can bounce on it when you're doing that too. It's pointless, but it's fun, so that's good. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a lot of detail to this game, and there's a lot of... Uh, basically hidden stuff all over the place. Uh, so it really encourages you to explore as much as you can to discover everything, which is great. Because I like to explore and discover everything. I'm a big fan of both of those. <laughs> uh, I got you already, bunny. There's the shop. This is nothing like a good speedrun. <laughs> At this point, I think a speedrunner would probably... Uh, I'm guessing probably in somewhere in Bowser's Kingdom at this amount of time. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I know it's under an hour and the moon doesn't take very long, though. Um... Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um... I should have rehearsed this, but I didn't. That was a foolish mistake. Okay, so yeah, my, this game is a good game, and I like it, and I would really recommend playing it, because it's an amazing collectathon platform, and it gives you fantastic controls and maneuverability, and gives you huge, expansive playgrounds to just go wild in. And that's the game. That's what it is. Uh, and, you know... You have all these moon quotas to complete the game, which are quite, uh, small quotas. Like, for example, this kingdom, there are 54 moons to be able to be collected right now. 
Uh, I only need 16 of those, so you will not be collecting most of the moons on your first visit. Uh, you can, but you, you don't need to, and it's encouraging you to just do the things you want to do, basically, and come back later, uh, which is great. Uh, that's really appealing. Um, the health system is basically lifted from Galaxy, I guess. You have three health, and you can get a thing that makes you have six health. Uh, it works okay. Uh, everything does exactly one damage, unlike in uh, Sunshine and uh, 64, where you had some things do more damage than other things. So it works out okay that you only have three health instead of eight, like in like you did in 64. Uh, coins don't heal you in this game, which is an interesting change, because uh, in every other 3D Mario game, coins did heal you. In this one, you have to get hearts instead. Uh, which is fine. Uh, I guess they wanted to make sure that you didn't... that they could give you lots of coins without accidentally healing you because coins are used for something else in this game. Uh, but yeah. yeah this is definitely not, not a normal speed run, if any means. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm just doing so much random junk. That is the deal here. Uh, go back to the tower. Um, so, yeah, um, I really should have rehearsed this up front, planned out what I was going to say. This is a wonderful game, and I think you should play it. Um, if you don't like mo forced motion controls, you can get through the game without them. There's a couple of moons that require them, but I'd estimate less than 10 of the moons require you to use a motion control of some kind. Uh, I'd say maybe three, actually? So I think three. Maybe two. Uh, there's a very small number of moons in the game that actually require you to use motion control. So if you don't like motion control, you'll be okay. Uh, you can still enjoy every other part of the game without any problem. Uh, if you don't like buying runes from shops, that's fine. You don't have to do that either. Uh, so that's fine. Um, if you don't like fighting bosses, then you will have to fight some bosses, actually, I'm afraid. Uh, a lot of them are skippable, but some of them are required to complete the story. Uh, this, however, the, most of them are very easy, so nothing to worry about. This one is a complete pushover. You basically just have to bop them on the head a couple of times. I mean, you bop them all on the head a couple of times, but this one, uh, once he, you know, starts doing this, you can just, you know, bop them on the head like that. And then you can bop them on the head like that, and bop them on the head like that. Easy. So yeah, um, the Brutal's generally pretty easy. Uh, most of the bosses in this game are pretty easy. Uh, there is a section that has harder versions of the bosses, which is good because they're all pretty easy, normally. Uh, it's nice to have an extra challenging version of stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> Um, hopefully I've managed to say something useful in this video. I, I've kind of rambled a lot, and I don't know if I said much that meant anything, but I said a lot of stuff, so hopefully I said something worthwhile. Hmm. Oh, I like the way, uh, the kingdoms progress as you collect story moons. You can see it's sort of dark here now. I think it's supposed to be, like, nighttime, maybe? Or just a storm of some kind. See, the Sphinx is gone, too. Uh... Sphinx would also move out of the way if you did things the normal way, but we didn't do that. Uh, and now there's these tanks here. They're called Sherms, actually, like Sherman, but you can just call them tanks if you want. That's fine, too. Uh, it's kind of hard to see their faces because uh, they always turn away, but they have a cute mustache, like most things you capture. And they're pretty fun to control. You do have to use them for a couple of things. Uh, you know, besides this, uh, you, you can skip them in some places, but they are they are required for a couple of moons, I think. Yeah, they are. They, they are required for a couple of moons, so you do have to use those a couple of times, but no big deal. They're fun. I uh, can get some of these if you want. I think you're supposed to use an uproot for that too, but I didn't, so that's cool. Uh, you may remember we went to the top of this area earlier. There were, like, some blocks and stuff in the way. Uh, they're not there anymore. You just go up like this without any trouble. There we go. 
There's also some stuff here now. You can see there's a bunch of robots recharging. Uh, you can clonk them if you want. <laughs> there's also some Goombas over here. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, this game is wonderful and I've like 100 percent of it twice and played it again while permanently crouching and made a video series of that, which you should check out if you haven't, because it's really good. Or at least, I thought it was really good. <sighs> and yeah, this, this game is wonderful, and I would encourage you to play it, because I love it, and I think it's a lot of fun, and I think it's one of the finest collectathon platformers ever made, and I have a few very small complaints, but they don't ruin my experience at all. Uh, some of those invisible coins I mentioned. Lots of stuff hidden in places that might be a little tricky to get to. As you can see, Cappy can help you collect these too, which is which is great. And I guess it'd be good that you can just sort of run through here if you don't want to get them. If you're doing a coinless run, so that's cool too. But of course, if you do a coinless run, you just wouldn't come up here, that you wouldn't have to worry about this. <laughs> anyway, um... Rambling. <laughs> you can see there's like little moons in the surface here. It's it's a nice detail. Little moons. Um. So yeah, uh, this game is great, and I think it's a wonderful, wonderful collectathon platformer that really perfects the genre and is absolutely magnificent and very much recommended by me as a game you should play. Uh, it controls beautifully. Uh, Cappy is a cutie pie and I love her, and as well as being an incredibly good addition to Mario's moveset. Being able to throw this hat at any point. Uh, it works a bit like Galaxy's Spin, it helps your movement in midair, as you can see. Stops your momentum a little bit. Uh, just handy for certain things. Plus, you can do the dive to bounce off of her and get more distance. So yeah, uh, there's a whole lot of special momentum stuff you can do, get lots of movement tricks going on. It's wonderful. Uh, I might try to do this. Over here you're supposed to use an uproot, but I keep doing it without an uproot in videos. Um, because I'm a dork. Uh, basically you just want to do things like this. Oops. Uh, yeah, you sometimes mess up, but that's okay. Uh, basically you just want to climb up these. It's very, very easy to do this with an uproot, and much faster than doing it this way, but you can do it this way if you want. And I think that's pretty much the hallmark of this game, that you can do things the way you want. Uh, again, the levels are pretty much in a linear order. There are two places where you get to pick the order of some kingdoms. Uh, as these two, like in Wooded, you can reverse that order, and there's two later kingdoms that you can also do backwards if you want. Uh, it doesn't really affect much of anything. Uh, I think a couple of things change, but nothing particularly important, basically. Uh, but overall, the order is pretty much fixed, and I think that's like a deliberate decision on their part, to get you through the story and unlock all the playgrounds as quickly as possible, basically. <laughs> Since the moon quotas are so small, it's pretty much just get to each kingdom and do, you know, the story, or mess around a bit and do some other stuff if you want, and then move on so that you get everything unlocked, and then you can play in any level you want at any time you want, because they're all unlocked. There we go. Again, it's one of these nuts that you just want to do some wall jumping and stuff to get to it. There we go. And then you just want to flip and... Uh, Mario, please. Grab my hand. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, so you can see that's totally doable without any capture, but if you do it with an uproot, it is much, much faster. So let me just demonstrate. Uproot, you can just stretch like this by holding the B button. So you can just... Doop. Oops. Well, that was a great demonstration. Let's go doop. Ba doop. Ba doop, ba doop, easy. But it's more fun if you do things as Mario, so there you go. 
Um, so yeah, uh, this game is really, really, really great, and uh, I think it's basically the Switch's, you know, killer title. It's the reason to have a Switch, because it's that good. Um, it's also, you know, only on the Switch, so you can't play it on anything else, like a Wii U or whatever, which you could do for Breath of the Wild. Uh, this one's only on the Switch, so yeah, Switch is what you need to play this wonderful collectathon 3D platformer, which I would recommend that you play because it's really, really good and really, really fun and something that I have completed twice and then done a challenge run of and I'm still playing it now and doing another video with different challenges. No video series, I mean. No video series with different challenges. And right now I'm doing... Oh, I was sort of trying to do a speed run, but I didn't really speed run. But that's okay. I had fun. And that's all that matters. <laughs> and yeah, so that's Super Mario Odyssey for you. A game that I think you should play because I love it and I think it is an absolute masterpiece of game design and Nintendo have made a good game uh, and it's the reason to have this platform because the Switch, while being a pretty cool thing, is super expensive and a lot of the games on it you can play and other stuff, but this one you can't. So this is the reason you need a Switch. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, uh, I guess that's the video. Um, I pretty much said why I love this game and mentioned a few problems with it that I have, and that's about it. Um, yeah, so yeah, forced motion control, the shops being weird, that's about all I can say about it, because this game is wonderful and I love it and I think you should play it, and I think it's good at nearly everything it does, except the force motion controls that it occasionally does, but fortunately they don't happen very often, so that's okay. <laughs> so yeah, Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, I love it. It is good. Oh, hey, there's a slingshot over here. Huh. I, I've never been over here during this part of the story before. I didn't know that this happened. Interesting. Oh, and they blocked that off. Okay, so they're trying to encourage you to go the right direction. Interesting. Like, it doesn't really stop you from going the other way because you can just go up to the tower and jump back down if you wanted to go over there. Because the tower has a warp point. But, you know, you're supposed to go to the other part of the story, so they're just nudging you in that direction, I guess. <laughs> I had no idea it did that. That's interesting. Watch you back over here. Sure did, Cappy. So yeah, Cappy is, is the best. I love her. Super cute. Um, and yeah, that's Super Mario Odyssey for you. A video game that I love and that I'm not good at speedrunning while talking about, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to end the video now before I keep yammering on and saying the same thing over and over again. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this sort of was kind of a review and sort of was kind of a speedrun and sort of worked as at least one of those things. Um, and if it didn't work as either of those things, I hope you at least enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.